Scarborough Regional Council held their meeting last week and some pretty interesting things came out of that meeting. We welcome the Mayor of Dubbo, Matthew Dickinson, right now. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Jackie. Good to be chatting to you. Good to have you. Now, a great meeting for you by the looks of things, uh, but you were able to, to get quite some quite progressive things sort of over the line, including... Uh, changes to your fleet of vehicles there. What have you got going on? This is something that's been bubbling away for a little while, Jackie. Obviously, as mayor, I drive an electric vehicle and I was the first mayor in the nation to drive an electric vehicle back in 2015 as the permanent mayoral vehicle. And that's also led to a couple of our fleet vehicles being changed in certain circumstances to EVs. And that's not that unusual. There's a few other councils across the nation that are starting to dabble in some electric vehicles. But one of the really important things we believe from our perspective is that we've got a number of vehicles that are supplied to our staff as part of their package. I mean, that's not unusual for councils or for any businesses. And those staff members have choices in the vehicles they have as part of their package. But at this stage, they haven't been able to choose an electric vehicle except under very limited circumstances. So the policy that went through our last council meeting, and it will go on public exhibition for 28 days to get community feedback, and I hope it goes through at least in the format that it's in now, but the policy will allow those staff members to choose An EV. Now, the tricky part here is you say, well, big deal, choose an EV or choose a petrol car. The problem is that the petrol car is cheaper at a ticket price, but dearer as a total cost of ownership. And that's something that we had to go through a policy process because some of these electric vehicles could be $20,000 dearer than a normal petrol engine vehicle and equivalent. So for our community, they might initially say, well, that's $20,000 more you're spending. That's community money. Why are you spending that money? Now, the calculation that's been done by our fleet manager, Steve Colliver, very progressive in what he's looking at here, is he said, well, forget about the ticket price. That's only one component of owning any vehicle. Then you've got the petrol or electricity, and you've got the maintenance costs, and then the resale of the vehicle. He's gone and done some calculations, used some external companies, some external organisations that specialise in fleet, and he's essentially found that let's look at the total cost of ownership. And when you look at that, the range of vehicles that are available to staff to choose from, the three electric vehicles are actually cheaper on a per kilometre total cost of ownership than the three petrol engine vehicles. So forget the ticket price, it's the total cost of ownership. So that's really progressive. Once that comes back to council, and again, I hope it goes through in some sort of form like it is now, then staff will be able to start choosing. We've got 68 staff cars, Jackie. So 68 vehicles we might be able to change over in the near future to electric vehicles. So I'm pretty excited about that. So what's the charging capacity in your town? Do you have EV charging stations? Very similar to Bathurst. We've got a supercharger station there. We've got four stations there for a Tesla supercharger. We've got an NRMA charger as well. We've also got some charging points on council-owned facilities, but we've also just put in an application to the state government for some extra facilities there, and that includes both in Wellington and Dubbo, to attract tourists to come through. And I was amazed there one day, Jackie, I was actually in Bathurst charging up at the station there, and there was a gentleman who pulled up beside me, and he was charging up, and you can't help yourself, you have a bit of a chat to people while you're at a charging station. And I asked him what he was doing in Bathurst, and he said, I came to Bathurst because you've got a charging station here. And so he was actually, as a tourist, he was using this from Sydney to go and visit locations that had charging stations. That was all he needed to actually go to those places. So the charging station themselves will bring tourists, but also the convenience of people, whether they be staff members, whether they be people coming through the community, having those charging stations there is very important. So the cost to recharge your EV is less than it would be to fill it up with petrol? I'll give you one idea. Most of the charging I do is at home, Jackie. One of my electric vehicles has a range of 632 kilometres, and when I charge it up at home, it costs me less than $10 to charge it up. Okay. All right. So So that's a fairly significant difference compared to petrol. So the whole fleet of Dubbo Regional Council, if this goes through, could go over to electric vehicles, and I imagine you'd be one of the first councils to do that. I can't imagine there's a lot of councils out there that have that policy that allow their staff to start to choose that because again we're always doing the best we possibly can with community money. It's ratepayers' money, it's not my money. So when you're doing that you're always very conscious of the cost. So when people see those ticket prices being higher that has obviously put off a lot of councils including our council in the past. But you really have to look at that total cost and when you look at the total cost you say to yourself well, why are we allowing our staff to have petrol vehicles? Surely it's better for the community for the best outcome for their dollar to get electric vehicles, and that's where we'll go. Now, we won't force our staff to do it. 
What we will do is we'll say you've now got the option going forward and already some of our staff are pretty excited about this idea when their car comes up for changeover, then they're excited to see what electric vehicle options they've got. Fantastic stuff. You're also looking at printing houses using... 3D printers. Tell me more. This has been a really fascinating process. One of our councillors, Matt Wright, brought a motion forward months ago to reserve four blocks of a future land development exclusively for 3D printed homes. And we were keen to see what was out there in the market, get a bit of a feel for it. We were blown away with the interest. We had eight different companies set up meetings with us to show their capabilities, many of them local, some international. And so we then got to the point where we said, well, this is great. We've got lots of companies out there that want to do 3D printing of a house. But what about the legislative requirements? Because it is different to a normal building of a house. So we've had to go through that process and make sure that when we do get these applications come in from these companies, we need to make sure that we can actually approve, if they're done correctly, approve these applications. So we've gone through that process. We've looked at all the regulatory issues. We looked at all the, the building code of conduct, the building codes, etc. And essentially, we're at the point now where we say, as a council, provided you meet the, the normal criteria you'd have to meet with building a home, you can start to put applications in for 3D printed homes. And to get the ball rolling, we've got a new amenity block that we need to build for one of our parks. It's due to be replaced. Now, an amenity block's a fairly simple piece of infrastructure. We'd normally go out to tender, we'd get builders apply, and we'd award that tender to someone. But we've actually gone out to tender for this one, and we've said exclusively this building has to be 3D printed. And it's a good chance for these companies that want to do 3D printing of homes to show the community what they can do on something that's a fairly simple process. Once we get those tenders in and award a tender, I think there'll be a fair bit of interest in that around that amenity block and then the next stage going to those 3D printed homes. Okay, so not having enough social and affordable housing in regional and rural areas is a big problem across most of Australia at the moment. So how quickly can you 3D print a house or a home? And this is one of the huge advantages. You can 3D print a house very quickly. And normally what you do with a 3D printed house is you're printing the outside walls and often the inside walls as well. You've still got to do the rest of the process. You've still got to put cupboards in and the plumbing and the electrical, those sort of things. So they still take time. But talking to some of the organisations we've already talked to, the actual 3D printing from the time you've got a blank slab to the time you've essentially got the walls, everything ready to go into inside that house, you might be a couple of days. And if you actually look, there's a TV show, I won't mention any, any brand names of a TV show, but there's a TV show that involves houses and people doing up houses that's actually using one of the companies that's talked to us. They use that company to do a 3D printing of a, a little building around the pool, a little cabana type pool or, uh, building around the pool. So they're already demonstrating that in terms of that particular TV show. And again, the process looks fascinating. When you watch the video, it's like toothpaste coming out of a little tube as this gantry lets this uh, uh, nozzle move around and actually build the home. The other really cool thing about it is forget about curves being difficult when you build a house. Normally, you're building a house, you want straight lines because you've got all your building materials in straight lines. Now, 3D printing a home, you can print all sorts of wonderful shapes. Okay, and finally, and quickly, because I'm really running out of time, you're also doing some urban planning. We've got, the same as many regional areas, Bathurst is no different to this, we've got lots of people who have finally realised that regional areas are the place to be. They want to be in regional areas, so how can they get out here? People are moving out here, which is all fantastic, except we've got this minor problem that we just don't have enough houses for them to live in. And this is, again, not just Dubbo, this is going across many areas like Bathurst, like Orange, like Tamworth, etc., We've got an urban release area, which was already in our planning, and I'm talking about medium to long-term future planning. We're thinking 10 years down the track before we need to start developing this area, but now with such huge demand, we're looking at releasing this whole area, which will house about 15,000 people, very close to the CBD of Dubbo, and what we're doing at the moment is going through a, a draft precinct plan to just demonstrate the zoning around that, but also we're putting in an application for the state government. They've got an accelerated infrastructure fund. We believe to put the infrastructure in the ground to make this whole development operational is about $12 million. And our plan was always to fund that over the next decade or so and fund that through sales of houses. But in this scenario, the government has said they'll fund 75% of infrastructure if we can accelerate some infrastructure. So that will only cost us $3 million if we're successful. So we're putting an application into that, but also demonstrating to the community that whole zoning for that area. 
And I, at the moment, it's blank paddocks. Come back in a few years' time, I think we'll be quite amazed to see how many houses will be popping up there. Sounds like there's some great things happening at Dubbo Council. Thank you so much for telling us all about it. Uh, my pleasure, Jackie. Always good to chat to 2BS. Thanks soon. See you. Bye-bye. That is Matthew Dickerson there, the Mayor of Dubbo, outlining just some of the things they are working on that came through at the last uh, Dubbo Regional Council meeting. Electric vehicles for their fleets and 3D printed houses.